What if I told you that this game, and this game, and this game are not three different games, but is actually the same game running the exact same code on three different frameworks? Would your response be A, so you copy and pasted code three times? B, that's impossible, what's the catch? C, I'm intrigued, tell me more. Or D, all three frameworks are similar, so I'm not impressed. There is actually no code copied from the game logic folder that handles physics, input, and other interactions into any of these other folders. It is possible, and I have the code to prove it. Now there is some specific code for each framework that handles updating and rendering since they all boot up differently, but that's largely glue code. Okay, how about this? It looks like the same game, doesn't it? Well... Your eyes don't lie, these are DOM elements, and the framework here is React. The only similarity between React and Phaser, Pixie, and Contra.js is that they are all part of the web ecosystem. There's two concepts that make this possible. The first is ECS, and the second is something that is much more controversial. Some people hear this term and have a strong antibody response, but I'm going to reveal it anyway. Hold on to your seats. The concept is dependency injection, or DI for short. Don't be afraid of this fancy name if you've never heard of it. Some have called DI a 5 cent concept with a $25 name. When I first set out to make this video, I wasn't 100% sure that I could make one demo game run on all these frameworks. Because let's face it, it's a crazy thing to do. It's like a fractal or higher level version of having a game in Unity run on Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and more. But it would have been really cool if it did work, so I risked going down a rabbit hole and wasting time where I could have hit a dead end in the hopes of coming out the other side with a more exciting example of dependency injection than all the usual lame academic ones. I floated the idea to a couple of people and they thought the odds of this working were near 0%. But what they don't know is that I've actually done something hard to believe with dependency injection before, so my odds for Phaser, Pixie, and Contra were pretty good. It was the other frameworks that I wasn't so sure about. In 2017, I worked on a Unity game where the code for authentication, interacting with the database, push notifications, deep links, remote config, and analytics was completely replaced in just one week without touching any game code. This was a mobile game for iOS and Android that leveraged Firebase. Now authentication, saving data to a database, and analytics are all things that tend to be deeply integrated into a game. So one month before release, it was decided that we would also be releasing it for Fire OS on the Amazon App Store. Unfortunately, two fires don't seem to make things better as Firebase did not work on Fire OS. Now, the reasonable thing to do would have been to skip the Amazon App Store, but you can't always be reasonable. So instead, I set out to replace every Firebase service with an AWS or Unity equivalent that would work on iOS, Android, and Fire OS. The reason it only took one week and involved touching no game code is because we used Zenject from the beginning, and everything was already modular and loosely coupled. A potential Category 5 hurricane was reduced to a thunderstorm. Flash forward to today, and dependency injection is one of my favorite ways of structuring serious applications of all kinds. It does have some overhead, so I don't use it on small projects. So the five cent definition for dependency injection is this. So this is an ES6 class. It's a car and it has a constructor. You see that there are basically three dependencies, right? We have, we have an engine, we have tires, and we have doors. It turns out that this is actually not a good thing to do it like that. We have some problems with that code. So the car itself knows how to create an engine and the car itself knows how to get tires and doors. This can be a problem if you want to test your code. Just think about uh, switching or swapping out those dependencies with mocks, right? It's pretty hard to do. What we need is a way to kind of abstract those implementation details away so that the car doesn't know about it, right? And this is what it looks like. 
So basically what we do is we, we pass in the, the uh, dependencies that we have in the constructor. So in the end, you can say that testing and reusable code is somewhat like the same thing, right? And basically, um, that's it. That's dependency injection. It's so simple that it may really only be worth one cent. But have you seen inflation lately? This seemingly basic idea can help prevent you from getting entangled with something with even more haters than dependency injection, yet it is used incredibly frequently since it sometimes hides itself. We've got natural disasters, uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, mass extinction events, cancellation of firefly, and that tiny piece of skin that gets up under your fingernail that if you pull it, it takes an entire chunk of your hand off. Also nuclear war. All of these things are caused by the same thing, and it's probably sitting in your game right now. Singletons. Singletons are not always transparent in JavaScript like they are in C-sharp. When you export an instance of something out of a module like this, it doesn't look like a singleton by example but that is still exactly what it is. This is not wrong, but any function or class that uses Event Center is tightly coupled to it. If you wanted to move this function to another project, then you'll also have to bring this Event Center file, which can then have even more dependencies. A project with many engineers working like this often leads to a web of tightly coupled and inflexible code that looks fine from the outside, but is actually hard to work with and prone to bugs. The way I try to avoid these problems involves three key principles. I want everything to be modular as much as possible. Uh, we want everything to be editable, either runtime editable or editable by designers, artists, anybody on the team. And we want to make sure everything is debuggable. So modular, editable, and debuggable. The part people dislike the most about dependency injection is one, all the frameworks. And then two, the boilerplate, the magical annotations, and then the terminology. I'm using Brandy as the DI library for the open source zombie game as it keeps things about as simple as it can be while still having an injector to automatically resolve dependencies. You can manually resolve dependencies, and I've done it, but it gets out of hand pretty fast. Brandy still does have boilerplate, like creating interfaces, binding them, configuring the bindings, and defining injections. But this library is small and has no hidden magic. It also provides useful errors. DI is the best system that I know of that encourages writing modular, configurable, and testable code. It is almost like insurance. You pay a small overhead that is often useless until something unexpected happens. Now, if you're still not impressed, I've got one more example. I honestly don't think this would be possible, or at least as straightforward, without ECS and dependency injection. You can judge for yourself, the code is on GitHub, link in the box below. To learn more about how and what I'm using to build the open source zombie game, check out this video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one, and until then, come join me on Discord.